Let's look at a couple of example problems um, of computing the Fourier series, discrete time Fourier series. Um, first problem we'll look at is 9.1-1, um, where we're asked to find the Fourier series representation of this discrete time sequence. Um, first step is to actually write these sinusoids in uh, terms of frequencies that are within the range uh, minus pi to pi. And so we can write this one as cosine of 0 0.4 pi n. And we can write the sine as minus 0 0.8 pi n. Um, and then uh, we want to find the, the, um, um, the period of each of these looking at the 0.4 pi n. Uh, omega 1 over 2 pi is uh, 0 0.4 over 2, um, which uh, that can be written as 4 20ths or 1 5th uh, with a corresponding period of 5. And then uh, for the second signal, omega 2 over 2 pi um, is uh, 0.8 over 2. Uh, which can be written as 8 20ths, which reduces to 2 fifths, uh, which also has a, a, a period of 5. So the smallest period is 5. The corresponding fundamental frequency then is 2 pi over n0 or the 0 0.4 pi n. We'll see, see that the 8.8 .8 pi n is actually the, the second harmonic, where 0.4 pi uh, is actually the first harmonic frequency. Um, instead of calculating the Fourier series using the, the defining summation, um, we'll actually just use Euler's formula uh, to expand these two um, discrete time um, uh, sequences and uh, determine the Fourier series coefficients by inspection. So for the, the cosine of 0.4 pi n, we can write that as um, 1 half e to the plus j 0 0.4 pi n uh, plus 1 half e to the minus j 0 0.4 pi n. And for um, the sine wave, we have uh, 2 times 1 over 2j uh, e to the minus j 0 0.5 pi n uh, minus e to the be the negative of the, the negative angle so we get plus j 0 0.8 pi n um, collecting terms here uh, we'll have 2 e to the j omega 0 n, that's this term, since omega 0 is 0.4 pi n, um, um, plus 2 e to the minus j omega 0 n, that's from this term, and then we'll have uh, 1 over j uh, e to the um, uh, minus j 2 omega 0 n, that's this term, minus 1 over j e to the plus j to omega zero n. And then um, since our Fourier series is defined as the sum from over any interval I'm gonna, uh, of n zero terms, five terms, I'm going to go from minus two to plus two in this case of dr e to the j r omega 0 n, where we can see by inspection that d1 is 2, d of minus 1 is it's also 2, we count minus 2 by mistake, um, d of 2, which would be the uh, j2 omega 0 term, 
um, is equal to that coefficient is this minus 1 over j term, uh, which if we multiply both numerator and denominator by j, we get minus 1 over j is equal to j. And then d of minus, minus 2 is this coefficient, 1 over j. Again, multiplying numerator and denominator by j, we get that's equivalent to, to minus j. And then our there is no d0 terms or d0 coefficient is uh, 0. In terms of the magnitude phase, the magnitude of the d1 term is equal to the magnitude of the d to the minus 1 term. Those are both equal to 2 and the corresponding phase angles since they were both real and have an angle of 0 and also see that the angle of the d2 term, I'm sorry, the magnitude of the d2 term is equal to the magnitude of uh, the minus 2 term. They both have a magnitude of 1. Uh, one was equal to j and the other was equal to minus j. And then so the angle of d2 is actually equal to the neg negative angle of d minus 2. Uh, and the angle of the d2 term, which was j, is just pi over 2, or 90 degrees. Uh, so we could plot those. Again, it's typically plot them uh, versus omega, which is our frequency, which our, our harmonics are at r times omega 0. It's convenient to also plot them versus r. have these terms and then for the the magnitude the d1 term is uh, d of minus 1 term has a magnitude of 2 as does the, the d1 term and the magnitude of the d of minus 2 and the d of plus 2 terms is both equal to 1 the magnitude of the, the, the 0 term is 0 and then again these are periodic so 3 4 so I could just slide this this is going to be equal to the magnitude of the d of minus 1 term at 4. This is equal to the magnitude of the d of 1. At 5, we'd back, be back to 0. At 6, um, that's equal to the magnitude of the d1 term. These would continue in this direction uh, for, forever. Uh, um, for the corresponding frequencies, uh, the frequency here is 0. Um, and uh, the first frequency here is our fundamental frequency of 0 0.4 pi, 0 0.8 pi, 1.2 pi, uh, 1.6 pi, minus 0 0.4 pi, so on and so forth. So it's, it's um, this is our magnitude spectra, D of R, and it's convenient to plot it in terms of frequencies because we know not only the, the magnitude of the magnitude of the term. Uh, but also the, the corresponding frequency of that exponential. And then you can similarly plot the phase angles, um, you know, plot them in degree or versus r first because that's slightly simpler. Um, our, uh, for our zero term, this is zero, so we can mark that angle as zero for our. our our d of 1 and our d of minus 1 terms, th those were both real, so they have phase angles of 0. Our d of 2 term has an, has an angle of 90 degrees, and our d of minus 2 term has an angle of uh, minus 90 degrees. And again, this would be in periodic, so um, the angle of the d3 term is angle equal to the angle of my uh, d of minus 3, and I'd have 3 zeros, and then a plus 90 degree term. So these are, this is the phase spectra of, of the corresponding Fourier series. Um, in this particular case, uh, we can also write x of n is equal to the sum from n equals 0 to 4, I'm sorry, um, x of n is equal to the sum 
from r equals 0 to 4 of d of r e to the j r omega 0 n, where, again, our d0 is 0, our d1 is, as before, is equal to 2, our d2 is equal to j, d3 is equal to our d of minus 2 term, and that's minus j, and d4 is equal to our d of minus 1 term, which is 2. Um, you can, can verify this x of n just by explicitly writing out the summation. We'll have, um, of course, a zero term for the d0, and then our first non-zero term we have 2 e to the j, uh, um, r is 1, omega 0, n, plus j e to the j 2 omega 0 n plus um, write that as next term is this minus j term minus j e to the j 3 omega 0 n and then finally plus 2 e to the j 4 omega 0 um, n um, or explicitly plugging into the the, J, the omega 0 values, 0 0.4 pi n plus j e to the j, 0 0.8 pi n minus j uh, e to the j, uh, 1.2 pi n, and then finally plus 2 e to the j, 1.6 pi n. And I can rewrite this as uh, 2 e to the j uh, 0 0.4 pi and this 1.6 pi, that's almost 2 pi times around the circle. So I can write that as instead of j 1.6 pi, I can write it as minus j 0 0.4 pi n. And then similarly, uh, e to the j 0 point pi and this value here that's greater than pi the 1.2 pi I can write that as um, minus j e to the minus j 0 0.8 pi n and then now from uh, Euler's formula I can recombine these to get 4 cosine of 0 0.4 pi n and then plus 2 sine of 0 0.8 pi n. So, and this is a sequence that's identical to my uh, original sequence. Let's look at one other example um, where we'll have to actually uh, compute the Fourier series coefficients. And this particular case, uh, this is problem 9.1-4, we're given an x of n sequence, a periodic x of n sequence um, that looks like this. Um, it's 0 at minus 3, it's 1 at minus 2, it's 2 at minus 1, has a peak value of 3, and then it's 2 at 1, and it's equal to 1 at 2, and then 3, it's back to 0, and then it repeats. So this is the x of n sequence. Um, uh, note that the, the, the period here is equal to 6, x of 3 is equal to um, x of minus 3, uh, so the corresponding period is, is 6, and the fundamental frequency then is 2 pi over n0, or pi over 3 for the fundamental frequency. 
Again, we can use any interval uh, uh, for computing um, any uh, six element interval for computing our Fourier series um, just based on the symmetry in the problem. I'm going to use the, the interval minus 2 less than n less than 3. So I'll use um, these uh, six elements. Um, and then from our definition of the Fourier series coefficients, it's 1 over n0, or 1 over 6. And we're summing from n equal minus 2 to 3 of x of n e to the minus j r pi over 3 n. And uh, so the d0 term, I'll plug in r equal to 0. And we'll see that that's, that's 1, 6 equal minus 2 to 3 x of n, and then for with r equal to 0, uh, these terms are all 1. So this, this actually just becomes, the d0 term is just the average value of our sequence. So it's going to be 1 6 of um, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 plus 0. These are my values of my x of n terms in the interval from minus 2 to, to 3. And then that turns out to be 9 6 or 3 halves uh, for our D1 term. And it's 1 6, the sum from n equal minus 2 to 3 of x of n. And then um, now with r equal to 1, it's e to the minus j pi over 3 n. Uh, with r equal to 1. Um, and so writing this out, I'll have 1, 6, and then I'll have uh, with n equal to minus 2, e to the plus j pi 3 times 2. Remember that xn value is 1. For, the, for n equal to minus 1, I have 2 e to the minus 1 times the minus j is the j pi 3 over uh, pi over 3 times n, and then uh, for n equal to 0, this e to the 0 is 1, so I'll have just plus 3 plus 2 e to the minus j pi over 3, um, sorry, n was 1 here, so that term shouldn't be, um, e to the minus j pi over 3, and then plus 1 e to the minus j pi over 3 times 2, and then plus 0. Um, I can uh, um, actually use Euler's formula here to um, combine these terms, and um, you, you can show that the d1 term is actually equal to 2 thirds and similarly, we can show that uh, d of minus 1 is actually equal to conjugate of d1. d1 is real, so d of minus 1 is also equal to 2 thirds. And similarly, uh, with a similar process, you can go through, it's not trivial, you can show that d of 2 is actually equal to 0. d of minus 2 is conjugate of d2, so it's also equal to 0. And then d3 is actually equal to 1, 6. Uh, so in this particular case, all of our uh, dr are real. So actually, let me uh, summarize what we, what we have um, are uh, d of minus 2 is equal to 0, d of minus 1 is equal to 2 thirds. Uh, d, of, d of 0 is equal to um, 3 halves. d of 1 is equal to 2 thirds. d of 2 is equal to 0. And d of 3 is equal to 1 6. And this is a special case. 
uh, in this particular special case because of the symmetry of the sequence. Um, um, all of my uh, D coefficients um, are, uh, are entirely real. So again, we could plot the magnitude. The phase angles would, would all be zero. In general, these coefficients will um, actually, will uh, in general, be complex. Um, should note that uh, there is an easy way to compute uh, um, using octave. Can compute d0 to dn0 minus 1 from my x0 minus x of n0 minus 1 terms. And I can do that just using the FFT function in octave. It will give me my uh, discrete time Fourier series coefficients. I just feed it the value of my xn sequence starting at x0 and including six terms, and since that's the period. And there's a scale factor I divide by n0. And this would actually give me um, this vector uh, actually of uh, be three halves, two thirds, zero, one six, zero, and two thirds. So you should try typing that in uh, to octave to verify that that's what you get.